Hello, everyone. Welcome to my The Young and the Restless Homies official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. On The Young and the Restless, Lily Brighton's Davon Stay, Phyllis asks Chance to arrest Sharon, and Jill examines Victor's offer for Abbott Chancellor. At Society, Phyllis informs Lauren and Nick that she is correct about Sharon, and that proving her guilt is the only way she can save her kid. They would have done the same thing in her place. Why are they not on her side? Lauren claims it isn't about sides, and Nick tells her to stop pursuing Sharon. Phyllis will not stop. She will confess to anybody who would listen that she is guilty. If you have a problem with that, stay out of my life. She stops out. Nick and Lauren talk about her fascination with Sharon. Nick hopes they find some proof soon that will exonerate Daniel and reveal who killed Heather. At the Abbott estate, Abby shows Ashley her garment on her tablet. Ashley claims Sally did an excellent job. She can't believe her little girl is marrying tomorrow. Abby claims to have matured and is about to marry again. She hopes to get it right this time. Ashley believes she and Davon are the perfect match. Ashley becomes sad as she realizes she will be walking Abby down the aisle tomorrow. Abby asks if she's okay. Ashley assures her. She asks Abby if she is sure. Abby claims Davon loves her, and when she sees him with Dom, her heart nearly explodes. She is concerned about one thing. Lily and her father had been bickering over Chancellor. Lily might remain away. Ash thinks that's bad. But she believes Lily will show up. They embrace. In Victor's office, Jill wonders what type of deal he wants. She wonders if he expects her to run things at Chancellor again. Victor denies making such a suggestion and claims to be aware of her situation. Jill was irritated but not surprised that he knew what was going on with her heart. So you were taking over my company. Why didn't you send me flowers and a card? She is still alive and well, and she notices Victor has had his own set of scares. They are fighters. Victor knows why she stepped back, but not why she gave Billy authority. Jill believed Lily could keep him on track. Victor believes she'd be much better at Winters. Jill wants him to get to the point. What exactly are you proposing? Victor believes Jill should no longer consider running for chancellor due to her illness. Jill says she's feeling better, so thank you so much. She wants to know what his plan is. Victor wants her to sell the company back to him at a significant premium to market value. Jill inquires as to who he would delegate authority. Victor chuckles. Someone Catherine would approve of. Jill wonders who that would be. He says, Nikki. Victoria and Nikki reminisce about their former house at the ranch. Victoria hasn't seen her mother this pleased in quite some time. Nikki claims she only has Victor to thank. The discussion shifts to Chancellor's probable acquisition. Nikki argues that Billy's latest misstep was employing Phyllis, whose stint was brief. Despite her dislike for the woman, she cannot help but sympathize with her and her family. Sharon tells herself in Phyllis' suite that she is an idiot, but she may not be so stupid as to hide the proof. She mutters that maybe she doesn't have any and that she may make all the ridiculous charges she wants, but no one will believe her. Just then, the door opens and Phyllis enters, beaming. What a coincidence to discover you here. So funny, I was just chatting about you. Phyllis believes Sharon was hunting for the evidence she claimed she possessed. Sharon believes she can fabricate proof to frame her. Phyllis shrugs, saves the woman who planted Heather's phone and who planted bloody towels in Daniel's apartment. Sharon has no idea what she's talking about and accuses her of exploiting her son's misery to further her vendetta against her. Sharon feels bad for her. Phyllis claims that speaking might work on Nick but not on her. She is free to do anything she wants with her. But when it comes to her family, she has crossed a line. Sharon finishes listening and heads to the door. Get out of my way, Phyllis. 
Phyllis inquires, what are you going to do? Kill me like you did, Heather. She informs Sharon she's not leaving and summons Chance to come straight away. Daybon tells Lily at Crimson Lights that he will do whatever it takes to convince his sister to attend his wedding, even if it means asking her to do it for Dom. Lily complains about Daybon badgering her about her career at Winters and now his wedding. Daybon believes it has worked in the past. Lily sighs. Of course, I'm coming to your wedding. She vows to smile when she sees him marrying Abby. She cannot promise that she will not give Victor a filthy look. Billy approaches Lily and asks if they can talk. Davon replies, I don't think she wants to talk to you. Billy doesn't care what Davon thinks and asks Lily if she accepts his apologies and will accept his offer to work with him at Chancellor. Davon intervenes, but Billy refuses to speak to him. Davon thinks he looks desperate. Billy instructs him to stay out of his business. Davon claims his sister is his business. Billy doesn't believe Lily requires somebody to speak for her. Lily is able to communicate for herself and requests that Davon leave her alone to speak with Billy. I will handle my business. Davon leaves and Lily informs Billy that she has an answer for him. Jill informs Victor in his office that Catherine's love for Nikki does not qualify her to lead a business. Victor believes she is up to the challenge. Jill explains that Chancellor is more than just a business to her. She has dedicated everything she has to that company, including perhaps her connection with her son. Victor understands her confused feelings, but Nikki overseeing the company would honor both her and Catherine's legacies. Sharon warns Phyllis that keeping her there proves nothing. Phyllis admits she had some doubts about killing Heather, but she is now certain. Her spirit is dark, and she can see it behind her eyes. Sharon orders her to move out of her way. Phyllis assures her she isn't going anywhere and forces her back. Sharon's eyesight blurs, and she needs to sit down. She's really not feeling good. Phyllis believes this is because she can sense the walls closing in. She murdered Heather and is now attempting to get her son to accept responsibility. You have harmed so many people. Now the world will perceive you as a cold-blooded murderer. Sharon claims she isn't and passes out. When Sharon approaches, Chance inquires as to her well-being. Sharon inquires, where am I? Phyllis responds, you know exactly where you are. Sharon wonders, did I black out again? Chance wonders if this has happened before. Sharon claims it has happened several times in recent weeks. Phyllis informs her that she does not get to play the victim. When she walked in, she was checking around her room for stuff. Chance questions Sharon, is that true? Sharon informs him that Phyllis has been accusing her and that she has evidence to back up her claims. Chance inquires, what evidence? Sharon responds, she doesn't have any. Phyllis informs Chance she was bluffing in order to get Sharon to confess to the murder, which she knows she did. Sharon asks, you are so crazy? Phyllis denies that she was hunting for evidence that would establish her guilt. Sharon claims she did not trust her not to falsify evidence to make her appear guilty. Phyllis exclaims, you murdered Heather and are attempting to frame my son. Please, Chance interrupts. Stop right now. Phyllis wants him to arrest Sharon right away. Only Chance can arrest her for breaking and entering. Phyllis responds, I'll do that. Chance wonders whether she is sure. From what he can tell, Phyllis is the one who is out of control. Phyllis throws her hands up. Fine, don't arrest her. She informs Sharon that she will not rest until she has proof. Sharon asks Chance if she may go. Chance claims she can, but she should have someone take her to the hospital if she has been losing consciousness. Sharon is fine. She's certain it's just stress. Sharon leaves and Chance orders Phyllis to stop. Stop interfering in a police investigation. Phyllis wonders if this means the probe is still open. Chance instructs her again to stop. Phyllis wonders what happens if she doesn't stop. Chance will propose that Sharon obtain a restraining order. 
Phyllis cannot believe she is the bad guy here. Did you lose your mind? Has the entire planet lost its mind? At the ranch, Nikki is aware that Victoria is concerned about what taking over Chancellor will entail for Billy. Victoria does not want to see him fail. She also wants her mother to succeed. Nikki wishes she could overcome her concern for Billy. Victoria claims it affects Johnny and Katie. Nikki claims Jill gave him every opportunity to prove himself. Whatever happens next is entirely his own fault. At Crimson Lights, Lily informs Billy that she has given it a lot of thought. Chancellor is not only Jill and Catherine's legacy, but also her own. She doesn't want to see Victor and Nikki hack it into a thousand pieces after they're done with it. Billy believes it sounds like she is saying yes to him. Lily says she'll do everything it takes to ensure Jill's support. She does not want Victor to win. Billy says it's amazing. Lily has two conditions. Davon meets Ashley with a hug and informs her that Lily will attend the wedding. They're all confident she and Victor will be on their best behavior. Davon has a gift for Ashley to commemorate the big day. It belonged to his grandmother. He hands over a locket chain containing a photo of Abby. Ashley believes it should stay inside the family. Davon claims they are both his family now. He wants Ash to remember that, while Abby will become his wife, she will always be her little child. Maria and Nick enter the club as Sharon walks down the stairs. They question why she was upstairs. Sharon claims she inspected Phyllis' room to ensure there was no phony evidence against her. Nick questions whether that was truly required. Sharon claims she found nothing, but Phyllis called Chance and accused her of Heather's murder once more. Maria is stunned that she broke into Phyllis' room. Nick warns that this makes her appear guilty. Sharon claims that Chance took her side. He understands how insane Phyllis is. Maria cannot believe Chance did not arrest her right away. Chance appears and suggests he should have. He advises that the more she allows Phyllis to get under her skin, the more it appears she has something to console. He instructs her to stay away from Phyllis and goes away. Nick informs Sharon that things are getting out of control. He tells her to make the journey to Sedona she has been putting off before the situation worsens. In her suite, Phyllis observes, Sharon, you can flee but not hide. I know just how to establish that you murdered Heather. In Crimson Lights, Lily informs Billy that if she is in, Phyllis is out. She refuses to work with her in any manner. Billy informs her she has already left. Lily's second criterion is that they be equal partners, and she will require written confirmation. Billy agrees. Lily warns him not to screw her over on this, or he will live to regret it. Billy assures her that everything is okay and that he is quite excited about this. Shall we go tell my mom the good news? In Victor's office, he makes Jill an offer for Abbott Chancellor. She adds, that's a big number, and agrees to think about it. Victor expresses his pleasure that she returned to attend Abby's wedding. She's looking forward to seeing him tomorrow. After she leaves, Victor takes out his phone and contacts Nikki at the ranch. He inquires about how she is loving their new home. Nikki says it's like a dream. She inquires about the current state of affairs at work. Victor claims it's been productive. They discuss the wedding. Victor informs her that they always throw a terrific party. Ashley enters the Abbott Mansion and hugs Davon and Abby before heading upstairs. Abby and Davon can't believe they're marrying at the new ranch house tomorrow. Davon can't wait until they say he can kiss her. She inquires, why wait? They kiss. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. If you like my videos, please like and subscribe for more information. I'll see you guys next time.